In this video, we're going to be looking at ice tables. Uh, so there's going to be a general introduction about ice tables and an overview, followed by a couple of simple examples. So we're going to start with what is an ice table. ICE is an acronym. So ICE stands for initial concentration. So that's the concentration that would be present before any sort of reaction takes place. C stands for change in concentration. So that's the concentration change from when we start the reaction to when we reach equilibrium. And that means that E stands for equilibrium concentration. So that's going to be the concentration at which our reaction appears to have stopped. So I, C, and E are going to be really important in all of our ice tables that we write. So an ice table is going to have the general form um, of an equation at the top of the ice table. So I'm just writing the equation here for a generic reaction. So the small letters are the coefficients and the capital letters are the chemical species. Um, and so when we have a, I, C, and E down the side, uh, we're going to put our molar concentrations of the species, the changes in the equilibrium concentrations, in this table. In the change part here, we can actually compare the change of all of the various species by looking at the mole ratio of each species. So if we were to uh, draw a line from reactants to products, one thing that's going to be really important for our change is that if, let's say, our concentration of reactants goes up, our change is positive, our concentration of products will go down. If our concentration of reactants goes down, so it's negative, the concentration of products will go up in a positive change. So we're always going to have opposite signs on either side of the arrows for the reactants and products. The magnitude of the change can be rep represented with mole ratios. So let's say that our reactants lose um, concentration. Uh, the change in concentration will be represented by X, which is represented as one unit of chemical change, multiplied by the coefficient in front of the chemical species. So A will experience a magnitude change of A times X, B will be B times X, C will be C times X, and D will be D times X. So our first example is 1.2 moles per liter nitrogen and hydrogen gas are added to an empty flask and allowed to reach equilibrium with the product of their reaction, NH3. At equilibrium, the concentration of nitrogen is 1.0 mole per liter, what is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? So we're going to start by writing our reaction down. So we have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas. And that's going to be in equilibrium with ammonia. So ammonia is NH3. We need two of them to balance out the nitrogens, and that means that we'll need three hydrogen gases. So we have our balanced equilibrium reaction, and we're going to write ice down the side. So this is going to be the first step in every problem, balanced reaction and ice. In the problem, it says we start with 1.2 moles per liter of N2 and H2 in an empty flask, meaning that there's nothing else in the flask but those two chemical species. So we can fill in our initial concentrations. Um, so we have zero ammonia because we had an empty flask. I'm just going to put a dotted line through the arrow so we know each side of the reaction for the, uh, the side of the change. Um, the next piece of information we have is that the equilibrium concentration of N2 is one mole per liter. So we can fill that in. Um, that means that the change in our reactants was negative. And so the change for our products has to be positive.
Uh, now, if we look at the equilibrium concentration, the initial concentration plus the change should equal our equilibrium concentration. So we could rearrange this to solve for change. Now, you might be able to look at the table and just figure it out. But if you do want some uh, a mathematical formula, it's being given uh, kind of in the bottom left corner there. So initial minus or equilibrium minus initial, and we get a change of 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2 moles per liter. So the sign of our change is negative because the concentration decreased. That must mean the sign of our change in hydrogen is also negative, and the sign of our change in nitrogen is positive. Now, if we look at the relative coefficients, hydrogen has a 3, nitrogen has a 1. So that 3 means the magnitude of change is going to be three times as big for hydrogen as it is for nitrogen. So where we have 0 0.6, 0 0.2 for our nitrogen, we have 0 0.6 for hydrogen. So we just copy the relative coefficients. If we add together our initial plus our change, we get an equilibrium concentration of hydrogen of 0.6. So looking at nitrogen and ammonia, we see 0.2 and 1. So we have twice as much ammonia from our coefficient, so our magnitude of change should be twice as big. So 0.2 times 2 is 0.4. So we have a 1 in front of nitrogen and a 2 in front of ammonia. So the coefficient change is mimicked in the concentration change. So that gives us an equilibrium concentration for ammonia of 0 0.4. To solve for KEQ now, we're just going to write our equilibrium law. So it's products, which are NH3, raised to their coefficients, which is 2, divided by reactants. So nitrogen times hydrogen. And hydrogen has a coefficient of 3. So we can plug in our numbers now. So we have 0.4 moles molar squared divided by 1.0 times 0 0.6 cube or uh, cubed. Make sure you're using brackets on the bottom here. Um, if you're not, you might end up with the wrong answer. And you should get 0 0.74. Remember, k is a unitless value. In our next example, uh, 1.0 moles per liter of hydrogen iodine and hydrogen iodide gas are added to an empty flask and allowed to come to equilibrium. At equilibrium, the concentration of HI is 0 0.40 moles per liter. Find the equilibrium constant for the following system. So our system is hydrogen plus iodine forms two hydrogen iodide gases. So we can start this by writing ice down the side to form our ice table. And if we look in the question, we see that we have one mole per liter initially of hydrogen, iodine, and HI. So we have initial concentrations for all three species. So we can fill those in. The next piece of information that we have in our question is the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide. And that's 0 0.40 moles per liter. So we can fill that in. And we know that the change must equal our equilibrium concentration minus our initial concentration. So the difference between those two is going to be our change. And so we're going to um, do 0.4 minus 1, and we get zero, negative 0 0.60. So our change in our products is negative. meaning the change in our reactants must be positive. So our reactants will increase in concentration. The coefficient in front of hydrogen iodide is 2, whereas the coefficient, and that gives us a change of negative 0.6, the coefficients in front of hydrogen and iodine gas are 1, so our change should be half as big, so 0 0.3 each. That's going to give us an equilibrium concentration when we add down the column of 1.30 moles per liter for both hydrogen and iodine. We can set up our KEQ expression now. So we'll have products, which is HI, that's going to be squared, 
divided by reactants, which are hydrogen and iodine. So we can plug in our numbers now. So we have 0 0.40 squared over 1.30 times 1.30. And we get 0 0.095. This equilibrium constant is very small. Um, this is because this is a reactant favored equilibrium, which we can see because we have a very large concentration of reactants at equilibrium and a relatively small concentration of products.